answering keys. Here we go. <laughs> I hate, I always forget that it makes me click before I can like turn the slide. Okay. <laughs> so, um, answering keys, what to look for when you're doing this. Okay, so we discussed uh, briefly in the, oh, so just, uh, we don't have like a agenda for this section, for this lecture. Um, but just to give you an idea of where we're going, I'm going to explain some of the technical aspects of answering critiques uh, in the first section. Shouldn't take that long, just be a brief overview. And then Brooke is going to explain from more of a, like, I don't know, like using your brain perspective of like how you go about searching for things to use when you're answering a critique by just like reading um, over what the 1NC is. So. Okay. When we're starting, we're going to remember that a K can generally be run one of two main ways with, of course, there's like some exceptions to that and like different spinoffs, but generally they're going to fall into like ideology Ks that are like bigger picture critiques of like the specific mechanisms that are used in the app and stuff like that. And you're going to have representation Ks that are critiques of the way like language is used within the app, the way different things are presented in the app. Um, and so these can sort of be thought of as like two tiers um, of critique when you really break it down. One tier would be talking about like the actual implications of the app if it was beaded into existence. So that's like your cap case, your um, like, some of them, most Ks fall into both categories in some sense, but they're going to be like cap Ks, settler colonialism K, um, like security K, or that's a reps K, sorry. <laughs> I'm confusing myself here. But basically, like, there are all the Ks that are critiques of certain things that are going to happen when you do the app. Reps Ks are going to be critiques that are more based on, like, the way you frame your app. Um, and the knowledge that's being produced, like the epistemology behind your app. Um, and so these operate more, less on the level of fiat and more on the level of like, these are things that we're debating in this round and the knowledge we're producing in this round. Um, and these things have educational value. And so the difference between those mainly is the way that you're generally going to want them to be run. So like we talked about before in our discussion earlier, um, there are some critiques that are definitely best to run with an alternative. So like if you're running a critique that's based around some aspects of identity and you have an alternative, um, generally that's a pretty embedded part of your critique. And if you're debating it against like a KF, for instance, you're gonna wanna keep your alternative because it's your competing methodology with the KF. Um, and so for those critiques, the parts that the neg is going to be looking to win will be the link, the impact, and the alternative because this is all focused on like material things. Um, and so the link and the impact to the F are like the, or the link and the impact to the K are different material things that are happening that are negative. And then the alternative is a different approach that you can take that will help resolve those things. The representation case are going to focus a little bit more, they don't necessarily have to have an alternative. Um, if you're running a security K and you're saying, oh, the other team is making up these like extreme scenarios that are never actually gonna happen. They're just trying to scare everybody into like getting more weapons and stuff like that. You don't necessarily have to have an alt to that because it's like your alt is kind of just like, don't, don't securitize things. Don't like hype up conflicts like that. Um, and so in that instance, the link, the impact, and the framing that you're using uh, around the critique are a lot more important as to like winning strategies. Um, and so those are the things that people are going to go heavy on in those instances. Okay, so that's just background for um, <laughs> general arguments. Um, the general things that's like kind of a list in your head to go over, I guess, when you're debating against a Kate. Um, is just go over like if you can run any of these things because they're generally going to be like the stock arguments that you have against critiques. So you've got permutation, um, which is like 
generally going to be do the plan and the alt um, or do the plan and then the alt um, or do the plan without this representation. Some, some variation of that. It's very similar to permutations for a counter plan. Um, you're just trying to come up with some way that your app can coexist with the critique because you want to show that the critique is not mutually exclusive with the app and that your app isn't necessarily going to perpetuate the impacts of the critique. The theory arguments that you can use um, are conditionality, uh, which we discussed in the discussion section last time, a lot of like the implications of conditionality specifically with re regards to ethics when you're running different types of identity case. Um, utopian fiat, um, which is a little bit of a tricky slope because they can also say, well, if we don't get fiat, then your app shouldn't get fiat because your app is equally like far-fetched. Um, but especially for case that are saying that, oh, we want to, uh, our alternative is to like destroy the government or our alternative is to like switch to communism or something like that. Like that's a pretty far reach. Uh, so utopian fiat is useful there to say that that's unfair for you to have to debate against. Um, and performative contradictions can be really useful, especially when somebody's running like a K of like capitalism and then an econ dissad. Like those two things are obviously contradictory and answering one is probably gonna hurt you answering the other. So um, you can also do specific answers to the theory of the K, answers to authors, answers to their specific ideology, logical problems that come up. Um, and Brooke will talk a lot more about this when she's talking about going through, um, going through the text of critiques to find arguments against them. No link arguments are also pretty stock things that you want to throw in. Um, a lot of k-links are pretty tenuous, uh, especially things that are like links of omission where they're just saying, oh, you didn't talk about this. Um, it's pretty hard for you to include everything in the world in your 1AC, so those are generally things that are pretty easy to argue against. Ah! And then framework is really important to include because a lot of critiques will say that you should just be weighing like the representations of the 1AC and not necessarily like what the 1AC is actually doing um, and what it's actually solving for. And so you need to make an argument as to why you should get to weigh the AF or the 1AC because that's where most of your offense is going to be, especially on a policy AF. So next. Um, so then there's a couple different um, types of arguments that work better with the different types of critiques. Um, so I'll go over those real briefly. Uh, for more ideology focused critiques, um, the arguments that are going to be really helpful to you will be things like impact turns the alt, um, where you're really looking at the consequences of impacts of their, or, sorry, that should be the other, oh no, my bad, okay. Talking about impact turns the alt in terms of like the case impact. If the case impact is allowed to happen, that would turn the alt and preventing the case impact is necessary to prevent even further catastrophe. So that would be like, if you're running an app that's like some sort of, um, I don't know, you're running an app that you say is going to prevent like mass starvation and then the K is like a cap K then you can be like, okay, well, look, there's not going to be resources for everybody if we don't prevent mass starvation. So that's a prior issue. Um, and the impact of that would turn doing the alt because that would preclude us from doing uh, what we need to to survive. Um, case outweighs is similar to that in that you're weighing the alt against the impact to the K. Um, seeds the political can be an argument that you can use where which just means that you say that by them refusing to engage with the state um, by provi providing whatever alternative they're providing, um, that is an incentive to not follow or not pursue political paths um, to what they want, which will then mean that they're just giving up on the political sphere, which turns the government over to people who are going to cause much worse things to happen. Um, and like gives the government a way to like the extreme right wing and stuff like that. And then there's definitely a lot of things that will come up about alt solvency um, because most alts are taken out of context for critiques. Um, 
or not particularly well thought through in terms of like how they would work with the rest of the critique. Um, and so most alts to Ks are the weakest part of the K. Um, so all of those work really well against Ks that need an alt to be strong to win. Reps Ks are a sort of different deal because the alt is not as important. Um, so framework in the link debate is gonna be key to winning those. You need to have a really strong reason that's a value to running and debating the AF in debate um, and a value to thinking about those things in the real world and considering that as real world policy. Those debates will often come down to the question of is the impact of including the reps in the 1AC that they're critiquing strong enough to warrant rejecting the AF and not having that conversation at all? Um, and so that's where it comes down to a lot of heavy link debate and you wanna make sure that you answer all the links to the K um, and try to turn as much of what they're saying as you can um, and really make it a strong argument as to why your F is educational and it's a reach for them to say that they should just reject your entire F um, because you make some representations that they say are not great. So um, that was, I, oh, so this is such as some examples um, of framework first. Um, you want to say that the AF gets to weigh the 1AC because that's where you're going to get your offense from. Um, and this is just the structure of what your framework should look like. You should have your interpretation, which is that the AF should get to weigh the 1AC against the impacts of the critique. Um, and then your reasons to prefer, which will usually be something along the lines of if you can justify your method, you should be able to weigh the impacts of that method against the alt solvency because it's a K that happens in the real world. Or if it's a reps K, something that's like, we should be able to debate the merits of the plan um, in addition to anything that the negative brings up because that for provides a more holistic form of education where we don't just get bogged down into in debates over like words and representations. And instead we can weigh the impacts of different issues against each other um, and provide more productive conversations. Um, example of how a permutation could be structured um, is to talk about how the plan is something that can be part of the critique. So, for example, if you're running the ICE AF against a settler colonialism critique, you could say defund and disband ICE and work with embodied forms of activism, because if you remember, that was one of the alts. Um, and then you can say that the plan would be part of the broader alternative or the first step towards the alternative rather than being something that's mutually exclusive. As far as theory goes, um, this is just an example typed out of how you would run a vague alts argument. Um, you have to have, just like with framework, you have to have an interpretation, a violation, and standards, um, and explain like the impacts to that and why it makes it more difficult to debate if they make themselves a moving target and make it hard for you to know what they're talking about. So that was, ah, uh, I want to let me click. I'm really sick. What? Okay. Nope, nope, that just started it over again. Are you trying to end the share? Oh, I thought there was another slide that was like for questions, um, but no, that was the end of the presentation. I was just trying to flip to a slide that didn't exist. <laughs> Anyways, that was what I had. So I'll go ahead and just share oh, my cool. screen now so we can go ahead and get started. So, hey, welcome back to um, I guess, I mean, my voice, I guess. <laughs> but so for this side, we're just going to talk about how to approach answering a critique in the moment. Okay. So debate is really overwhelming. Sometimes you, you know, you coming into your first tournament of the year, you're the two AC, right? And they read this one and see, and you're like, whoa. <laughs> what do I do? Where where does this like where does this fit into the app? What are these words that you're using? Um, how do I how do I even respond? Should I just use the generic terms that I got from Saya? Should I just say, okay, I need to make a permutation? All right, 
the critique doesn't even link to the affirmative. Here's some things about the affirmative. Uh, you know, uh, should I say that uh, that the alternative doesn't solve for the affirmative? And should I move on? Or are there more that I should do? Is there more that I could do? Is what I hope that we'll be able to cover today. So the first routes of resistance for when answering an argument that you're surprised about, but particularly since this conversation is about critiques, is you should do two things. You should read it. You should read the argument in its entirety as much as possible. You should try to figure out at home before the debate tournament how quickly you can read. Um, not necessarily words per minute, but so just so you can get a feel of how, how you're able to process the information that you read in fast or slower terms. Because that'll determine how you approach reading a card. If you know that you're a person who is able to read and retain the information quicker, you would want to, be, to read through this card as, as uh, quickly as you can relative to how many cards are in that speech. So let's assume that the, we use the one in C shell that is in the uh, critique negative uh, file for the camp. So you all can see my screen, right? The the vault card is up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, so we're in the we're in the one and C right now. Um, we are collectively the two AC right now, and so we're opening up this document and we're looking and we see immigration policy is coded by an amnesia of settler colonialism. That sentence, there's a lot of words in that sentence. What does this sentence mean? It means, and this is what I'm gathering. If I'm the 2AC, we're the collective 2AC, I'm gonna just say some things that I'm thinking about to help me generate an argument and for stuff that I might run to write down on my flow for me to be able to respond. Immigration policy is coded by amnesia of settler colonialism. What's amnesia? Um, amnesia, it makes you forget things, okay. So then if I know that there's some kind of relationship between immigration policy and settler colonialism, where can amnesia fit into this? Hmm. Settler colonialism might make us forget that we're in a settler colonial estate. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the argument they're saying. I'm not sure yet. Let me look at the other sentence. Jurisdiction of who is it or who isn't a, a citizen under the U.S. nation state necessitates binaries of inclusion and exclusion that create assimilatory practices in indigenous dispossession. And that's a lot of words in that sentence. And if I was a 2A and I didn't know some of these words, I definitely do a couple of things. I'd look up what words I didn't know. If I didn't know jurisdiction or if I didn't know assimilatory, I'd look that up. <laughs> um, don't feel bad about when you uh, are debating against a, um, a critique and there's a bunch of big old $10 words that are on, you know, in ACT and, and uh, AP reading stuff, like all those big old juicy words that are in here, don't be like, alarmed by them. They're big words that say small things. And I promise you, if you type it into Google, it'll tell you what it means. <laughs> and if, it, if you don't get it from there, then you would ask that question in CrossX, what does this mean? What are you trying to say? Because we forget that CrossX is a time to also just understand the argument. Critiques are super are super interesting, and we all whenever we read it, sometimes we personalize it. And so you may have an understanding of the thing that they said that is not how they will end up explaining it in in the later speeches, really. So you you might want to uh, ask for context what is what exactly they're trying to get at. So I'd write down on my flow if I had a question about what they're trying to say, because maybe I don't understand that second sentence as much as I get that first one. Um, then, I, then I would go through the card. I'd look through and see which sections are, are the most highlighted. And are there sections of this card that are saying a different argument from what the rest of the card are saying? Because that's really important with the critique. 
So if I was reading, you know, this settler colonialism critique, I wouldn't want this card to say ultimately that immigration reform is a good thing because it may put me in a different direction than where I was going. Because if at some point in this card, in the section where they had not highlighted or something like that, um, like, you know, this is not to say that this is in this particular card right now. <laughs> uh, so don't go around just, just looking in this particular card to say it said this thing because Brooke said it in the lecture. I'm just giving you an example of how to look through a card to see if it says what the tag right here is saying. So let's say I go through this card, I continue to read, and I, un and, I, and I say, okay, well, I think then that what they're trying to say is that the affirmative is an instance of settler colonial amnesia, that we cannot keep making more conversations, more laws, more dialogue, more movement on the question of immigration because we are operating on stolen land. How can we keep doing these things that we think are making the society more ethical in a world where we have stolen this land and it continues to operate um, in this, in a, you know, in a colonialist faction? Because if we remember that uh, the saying that Saya had in the part one of this lecture that colonialism is a structure and not an event, then it wouldn't matter if the AF maybe does some good things. That's what they're trying to say. So you have to be able to identify the best form of their argument before you say no out loud to the other team or try to communicate that what the other team has said about the your affirmative is wrong. You should make sure that you fully understand the argument. The second thing you want to do is to be able to critique it. And now here's the thing. You won't always have a card. And you have to accept that. <laughs> you have to really get yourself comfortable with the idea that I can rely on my brain power to respond to these things because I have something to contribute to this conversation. So if we have surmised or if we have came to the understanding by the end of like reading through this tag, reading through this car with as much time that we can spend on that particular car, I would decide where can I make an argument in defense of the affirmative um, in response to this card. So immigration policy is coded by an amnesia of settler colonialism. I would think, well, this isn't, this card, this conversation isn't specific to the abolishment of ICE. The affirmative is this unique instance of immigration policy that this dude or dude being an ungendered term this person letty volp <laughs> did not consider if the did not consider an immigration policy that demanded the abolishment of ice that's not what this is in the context of so this cannot apply to the app what kind of argument would that be that I made based off the top of my head and just reading from what I got from the tag and what I've gotten from the card? That's a no link argument. It's helpful to, to, to figure out what is the argument that you're trying to make and then applying the debate buzzword or terminology to it. Um, because I think that like, you know, I see a lot of speeches of, of people who are kind of getting their start in debate and they'll say, no link, the affirmative is good. <laughs> or some variation of, of, of something that doesn't exemplify to either the judge or your opponents even, um, what about the affirmative does not link to the critique. And even if the negative doesn't have a link that is super specific to the affirmative, you want to have a no link argument that is super specific to the affirmative. So when they go more abstract, you want to be more specific. <laughs> because yes, generally immigration policy could be bad, but what if in the world of the affirmative, it does something different to immigration policy that was not conceived of in this person's argument? So going back to part one of the conversation, remember 
that critiques were created because there are biases and there are um, perspectives that people assume about reality. Volpe's reality, this author's reality about immigration policy is not considering the 1AC. <laughs> They couldn't possibly have considered that we will have suggested so radically to, uh, to abolish ICE. So that don't link to us, right? But you want to be, be able to, to identify when you make your arguments, which ones are offense and which ones are defense. Because unfortunately, as true as that argument may be, it probably won't win you the debate. But why? If it doesn't link to the air, how could they win the debate, right? <laughs> There's called the risk, the risk of a link. So you may be able to explain that this author is probably not considering the affirmative, but you would need to be able to explain well enough that this author is definitely, could not possibly have considered um, this to be in the world of this uh, card. Um, if there is a small percentage of belief that the judge could uh, find that this particular card could link to the affirmative, then only having an argument that is defensive will probably not win you the debate because you need offense. So an example of an offensive way to respond to this argument is that uh, I would think, okay, so not just where does the affirmative not apply to this? Why is the affirmative a good example of what we should be doing? Okay, all right, we need to stop forgetting. We need to stop being settler colonialists. We need to recognize, all right, I'm going to give some credence to your argument that this, that we are occupying stolen land and that as we keep negotiating who belongs here and who doesn't belong here, uh, you know, we, we, we further the violence of this practice. Because remember, as we talked about earlier, because violence is currently happening to people, that doesn't make it not bad just makes it also happening now. <laughs> Means it's something that we should probably put more emphasis on because it's happening. So if I, if I as the affirmative say, hmm, I agree with that personally, that, um, set, that we need to be more specific in addressing settler colonialism, I would wanna think about how my affirmative is not an instance of amnesia, right? If amnesia is a part of what is the problem here, um, and how we continue to move as a country on, on the, in this land in the wake of settler colonialism, that I would want to find a reason why the affirmative is an instance of us remembering, right? So I would say something, something like, okay, the affirmative, uh, the abolishment of ICE is actually in recognition of the fact that citizenship is an extension of settler colonialism. <laughs> and so if we abolish these structures, this big towering thing that suggests um, you can only be here if we decide you are allowed to be here is gone, then that's us remembering the history of settler colonialism. We need the F, you know? It stops being a moment where they have this like, you can say that, yeah, we are immigration policy, but we're immigration policy that explodes immigration policy, right? <laughs> it no longer operates in the world um, that Volpe was describing. And thus, this, you know, it, 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 the argument still doesn't have any credence. In fact, we take it a step further and we have decided that we won't just, you know, do whatever the, the alternative says. We, 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 we implode the systems that continue to make colonialism an active structure in this country. Um, so what we're doing right now is, a, is, a, is an example of line by line. So we're familiar with that, right? Line by line. Line by line is typically conceived of as responding directly to the arguments that your opponents make. And now here's the thing. Your opponents don't just say the things that come out of their mouth. 
because unfortunately in debate, we operate in a way that puts cards or evidence really, really high in the degree of importance here. And so knowing that we have to write down and take seriously to respond to the things that come out of our opponent's mouth, but we also need to look into the warrants of the cards. Because oftentimes, um, if, if they're at the end of the debate, there's, a, uh, there's like a specific argument that you two are going back for, you want to you wanna already be familiar with your opponent's cards as well as your own. That's why we were kind of going through, okay, so what is this person saying? They're saying all these things about uh, what's happening and how uh, immigration policy it needs to be, how it needs to be treated in a world that we are living in a settler colonial state. So you want to know exactly what this card says so that you can then use language that is similar to their authors when you're making offense, right? So if we have said that the affirmative is an, remember in our offense argument side, if we have said that the affirmative is an implosion of immigration policy, then we would want to use language and their evidence that it would exemplify why the affirmative is, a, is, is, is that, right? So um, I'd look through here, I'd say, hmm. All right, the framework of civil rights and the desire for inclusion into full membership cannot address democracy's intolerance of difference has operated through inclusion as much as exclusion. I'd say that would be pretty significant. I'd look at that and I would say, hmm, I should go on. While inclusion can be valued as good, it can also mean assimilation, absorption, and loss. All right. That feels like that's enough for me as a 2AC to, to have something from this particular card, even though there may be more for me to look at later. In a world where I'm the 2A and I'm on a time crunch because I'm trying to prepare my 2AC, I would look quickly for certain language that will be helpful and I would reference the vault card. I'd be like, uh, the affirmative is an example of the implosion of the settler colonial state, because we are recognizing that the, the framework of civil rights and desire for inclusion into full membership is examples of our democracy's intolerance of difference. You know, I would use language that is so close to the, to the textures of their car to show why we are an example of the good thing or why we are not an example of the bad thing that they have isolated. <laughs> Um, and this is, this is a, a way to make the critique a little bit less scary, hopefully, because I know that like you will encounter a lot more critique throughout this season than the settler colonialism critique. And so while we've provided you a lot of context for how to deal with this specific one, and we've gone a little bit into depth on uh, other types of critiques that are more generic, like the capitalism critique or uh, things of the like, you're gonna encounter a lot of critiques that you just don't get, <laughs> at least not on face. And so you wanna equip yourself with strategies that allow you to respond to them regardless of how familiar you are with them, initially, um, regardless. 